What is up everyone? It's your boy Salald Gaming here with a May 2013 Meadowlands format uh, deck list. I played Mermail in our first ever pod of this uh, format and made it to finals, lost in, <laughs> in finals to Dark World 2-0. It was, it was tragic, but I want to show this deck to you. Um, the main thing that I really wanted to test actually going into these pods was determining if Mermail really is the best deck because a lot of people doom about this this deck when it comes to the format. Um, there's a format library discord, people that are, are playing this format outside of sort of this small group I've started creating around the format and they've been dooming about this deck for a long time. And so I want to see, is this deck actually the best? Uh, let's play into pods and well, I lost in the finals. It's not that good, obviously. Let's talk about the list. Uh, let's hop right into it. So obviously we have the cards that we want to be pitching off of our Mermails. We have three Dragoons, we have two Marksmen, and we have two Heavy Infantry. These cards are insane. If you ever open uh, Dragoons plus any discard outlet, you just plus like crazy. Uh, you can search any Sea Serpent. Marksman uh, pops cards. And Heavy Infantry can either be an extra normal uh, with our next little piece here, which is Deep Sea Diva. And also what something that came up very frequently and something that got me into finals was discarding this to pop... Uh, when someone had committed into a monster like uh, specifically Tiger King that happened frequently uh, Whenever someone overcommits or tries to end on just like a monster or two This actually came up very frequently of like, oh, yeah, I'll just pitch this off of Teus I'll add a, a, a level four and then I'll blow up whatever guy you summoned uh, One thing that I will note about the Atlanteans is that we confirmed with a judge DD Crow does not work on Atlanteans. So if I uh, pitch this for uh, the effect of a Mermail, you cannot DD Crow this to prevent it from activating. It will activate in the Banishment. Uh, thank you, Konami, for that for that wonderful word. Banishment. Uh, banishment. There's Any also banishers. a very cool combo you can do where you Deep Sea Diva, you get Heavy Infantry, and then you can summon any Sea Serpent you know that you can Normal Summon. Uh, and you can just go again. You can make some crazy, you know, different Synchro plays. We'll get into the extra deck later, but there are some that came up very frequently for me doing this. Uh, I had no idea until I was actually playing this this weekend. Marksman has a secret hidden effect uh, that lets you that helps you to OTK because if it does battle damage, it summons another one. So you just go Dragoon, and then if you have another four, you can make a rank four play, or you can make a rank three play. Um, these were surprisingly good as just guys on field, not just for discards. Uh, these cards are crazy though. Uh, let's go ahead and let's hop into the things that we're using to discard them. We have Teus and we have Megalo. Uh, these are the big guys that we want to be using to discard. You have uh, the incredible combo of Teus pitch Dragoons, searches Megalo because it is a sea serpent. And then if you have more discards, you can then go Megalo to search a spell trap. This searches a level four, which is our next uh, discard outlet with a spike. Spike is going to discard something and add a level three water. Um, that could be Abyssland, or it could be Gund, or hypothetically, if you don't already have Marksman, you could go into Marksman. So there's a lot of, this deck took a little bit for me to learn just because there's a lot of different ways you can go about getting to uh, play through your, your hand, play through creating your boards. Uh, the one thing though that happened very frequently is if I have Teus Dragoons, we are ending on Gaios. This card is actually insane. Having a quick effect board negate is just absurd. Um, again, we'll talk about extract later, but I, it, that card is insane. Um, so that is all of our Mermails. Uh, we are not on Turge. It is something I've thought about, but I feel like the three spike is fine. Uh, Turge never really, there's never a moment where I felt like Turge would have come up, uh, but it's something I might play around with in the future. We're not on lead. We're not on Mullen Glacia. I think that those are insane overcommit cards uh, that really just, in the long term, are going to end up breaking you more. This deck can really brick hard where you just don't have discard outlets. Uh, you just don't have ways to like generate board advantage. So there's no reason to be playing <laughs> lead or Mullen Glacia, uh, even though when you when you resolve it, you win the game probably because you discard four out of your opponent's hand or whatever. Uh, it's it's just not worth it. This deck is much more consistent we found than those lists that we've seen. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get on to our non-engine DD Crow. This was initially in because, you know, maybe it hits Mermail. We didn't we didn't know at the time. Uh, but after playing in these pods, DD Crow just hits so many decks. You can hit Graffas, you can hit Archfiends, you can hit so many things. This deck, re uh, the, the, this format really relies on one of guys in the graveyard coming back. Uh, even Dragoonity, it can come up against them. So like there's, there's a lot of instances where DD Crow is just crazy. I think maining this is absolutely worth it. Um, 
I'm considering maining Valor as well if I can find the space. Uh, we've been playing around with this list since uh, I made it to finals because there's. I, th I think there is some <laughs> changes we can make to make Bless it meaningfully you. better. <laughs> Bless you! Happy Thank Pride! You. Happy Pride! <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be in the profile. Uh, we also have Mystical Space Typhoon. This deck dies instantly to DiFi. I've played this list in testing against Fire Fist. I love uh, Floodgates. And I've gotten DiFi, I think, like seven to ten times this weekend. I legitimately have lost count. And every time it was basically like I scoop because a bunch of these say discard to the graveyard for effect for or for cost. For cost. Uh, and so you just cannot activate half the cards in your hand. Uh, and it's just like, well, uh, uh, the sphere doesn't work because uh, you have to have Lind go to the graveyard to use this effect as well. Like, it's just, die is crazy. Uh, so we play MST and we'll see uh, a little bit when we get to the side deck, there's some additional options because no one is maining die If we're going second, we are set, especially against Fire Fist, we are going into our cards that are gonna try and out die uh, Some of our power one ofs, um, you'll see these in, every deck list to some degree these three in particular are crazy pot of avarice doesn't come up in a lot of decks i think this deck actually does want to uh pot of avarice i use it a couple of times uh because it really you just do go through a lot of names in the process of uh of playing this deck and sometimes you're like yeah i'd love to draw two and i have well over five guys in graveyard i'd love back in my deck sure i'd love to you know get a Dragoons back and or get a, a D.Va back to do another line or Spike, very commonly we're going through three. This is one of the main targets that I would go through for Sphere. We'd go Sphere into Lind, Lind then gets a Spike and then I can Spike pitch something like Marksman on my opponent's turn to pop a set card. Um, there's a lot of lines like that that exist and so this to shuffle back those three Spike really does actually matter, I found. Uh, but with D.D. Crow, you just sometimes get blanked on a card and you get hand loop. So, you know, it is what it is, that is the format. Uh, so our last few cards here, we have three Sphere and one Squall. Uh, sphere is just, I mean, it's insane. It, <laughs> it's really difficult for people to out because uh, you ha basically have to grip MST, assume if you have this set, uh, to out it in end phase, because you're just gonna end phase do this, Lin, generate advantage, uh, which means that you have other spell traps that are going to just stay on board. Squall is something that I think I used exactly one time. Um, but it being something that you can get into in longer grind games is just insane. Uh, and so I think that you absolutely want this in deck, even if it doesn't always come up. It's very similar, I think, to uh, Saito, I believe it is, in uh, the Fire Fist list, where just sometimes Mermel can really grind games out, uh, and you want to be able to just have a, a soul charge, practically, uh, that can get you into... Uh, some big guys, you can get into Abyss Gaios, you can get into some of your toolbox cards. I think that Squall is really solid. And of course, the No Men, um, they are lovers. Happy Pride Month. We'll move on to our extra deck. We have our Synchro Engine. This is, uh, so these are our D.Va targets pretty much. Armory Arm just gets you a four. It could come up with the Equip Effect, not frequently. Uh, Catastor is crazy into basically anything that's in Infernity and Dark World. Uh, and then Gungnir is a way for us to out Diefy. You would never discard monsters for the effect, obviously. 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 This is not take two. Um, <laughs> but it is a way to out those if you do not have MST in hand or some of our other outs to Diefy because we just lose to Diefy. Separately, if Diefy is not on board or we're going first and we just need to out stuff uh, or you know whatever, this just triggers Mermail, or not Mermail, but Ant Atlanteans and then Gund effects and like <laughs> popping two and then triggering effects is insane. It's also a seven, which comes up to make Gaios after you've used Gognir and you're done using it. Uh, and speaking of which, we have Gaios. This card's insane. Uh, I don't think I would ever play two. It didn't come up, but making the one of going first, quick effect, uh, one-sided skill drain is insane. It's a, it's a good card. Uh, the other thing that came up very frequently is Big Eye. Uh, I won the semis against Neil by just saying, okay, you made your board, I'm gonna go into Big Eye, I'm gonna steal your guy, I'm gonna attack for game. Is that a cash tier card? Yes, this oh, actually okay. came out of my cash tier deck. Uh, this card is, is, is very solid, uh, it helps out boards. There are some decks that just kind of die to Big Eye. Um, Would you consider playing the viruses with that? What about Secret Village? Yeah, what about Secret Village? Yeah, Secret Village. Hey, oh, that's yeah. Spellcaster. absolutely. We absolutely. This is a Spellcaster? This is a Spellcaster. Hey, you, spell you can play Secret Village. Eradicator. Eradicator. <laughs> Since when? That's disgusting. I hate that. 
Uh, so, Big Guy is crazy. I, I really like this. Uh, these two rank sevens. I don't think there are really any other rank sevens that are worth Trigger playing. Trigger sack. Not out if only. Trigger if, only. If only. If only. Next Happy week. Uh, so I, f I feel really good about this lineup. Uh, we have Dweller. This just shreds some. You know, the mirror match. It's... Tell them what you can do with it with the Dragoons. So I found this out. <laughs> in mid game. Second, in mid game. Second, second I believe place. in semis. Second place. I just I never thought about it until I did it. I was like, wait a minute. You can absolutely do that. So for the effect, detaching a monster uh, to make sure your opponent can't activate in grave. That triggers Dragoons. So you can use Dragoons to make uh, Abyss Dweller. Dragoons triggers if it's sent to the graveyard for a water monster effect. So you can make this with Dragoons and then just say, all right, detach Dragoons effect. It's it's absurd. It's, <laughs> I like, I was blown away that that is a real interaction, but it just makes it even better. We're in a water deck. It's a 2200. It's a good card. It kills Inferno. It, it also kills buffs all waters, right? Buffs all, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah, it makes it, it's even better. Uh, we have the Digusto Emerald. I didn't make this, but I do think that you know, just like with Pot of Avarice, there are instances where if I have two fours, which isn't super frequent, but sometimes it would be relevant to shuffle and be able to draw. You don't go into the extra deck very frequently other than, you know, the guys I've already talked about. Um, and another guy I'll talk about a little later. Diamond Dire Wolf, same thing. Sometimes you just need to pop something. Da Sigma, I never used it. Getting to a third four just like never happens. This could be something else, I think. Toolboxy. I just don't think this, I cannot imagine an instance where this comes up because we just have so few fours. Bahamut Shark is very funny and we'll see it when we get to the side deck. Um, this deck was initially maining creature, creature Swap. It's in the side now. I'll kind of talk about some of the rationale behind that. But the ability to make Bahamut Shark and then Asa Golem, uh, go into Asa Golem and then go for a Creature Swap with your opponent. They Bahamut now just have a guy. Dragoons. And trigger Dragoons. It also yes, triggers yeah. Dragoons as well, which you would be using to make this. Like, this is, this is just absurd um it didn't come up but the instant that it comes up you basically win the game uh we then have trite which is also another uh bahamut shark target also never came up i would never hard make this it's where's just the mermaid link to bro i dude i wish <laughs> uh we have leviathan dragon which uh came up almost came up at one point i ended up making 10 tempo instead this bro, is that trigger marksman it's a water <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this also triggers marksman. <laughs> uh, and then Gachi gets a Tensu, which overperformed. I was blown away. I, I was testing this, and there was a lot of instances where I had D.Va and nothing else. I was like, all right, D.Va, Infantry, I wish I had a rank two. This card has saved my ass, I think, a couple times in the, 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 <clears throat> the pod where I made it to finals. You can just sit on this, and decks have a hard time outing it. Unless it you is, draw mind control. Yeah, d d which is how I lost finals. Uh, but... You're excluding exactly mind control, this card just, you can sit on it until you draw into your discard outlets if you have a bunch of discards or until you get into discards for your discard outlets. Uh, that is the extra deck. The extra deck, you can play around with it because you really do not go into it a lot. The issue is there's not really a lot of synchros you want to go into. There's not a lot of sevens you want to go into. You f very rarely get into fours. Uh, so you can sometimes get into threes. Gotcha, Gotcha, Tetsu is one of the only good twos to go into in this deck. Uh, it is what it is. You can play around with this, but this is where we kind of landed on it. Uh, for the side, I mentioned this in other profiles, but Valor is kind of our substitute for Maxi in this because I just don't own enough copies to uh, have all the decks that I own have Maxis. Uh, this moved to the side after, this was initially in main and it was in main for uh, the pod that we fired. I moved it to the side because it just doesn't come up as frequently as I'd like and going first, it just is a dead card in hand. There are times where I draw two and I'm like, oh, well, I just have one less card in hand here. Um, Storm also went into the side after the pods. We found that a lot of floodgates are being played in this format. So we want some way to out those. Previously, this was Mystic Box. Uh, this card's also very funny and relevant in this deck. Um, to be clear, these cards are ways to give your opponent uh, Abyss Land and then in the case of Mystic Box, you could, if you had a, a if the, you're doing, you're like multiple turns in, you could uh, blow up an opponent's card, give them Lind, and then beat over it with a different guy that you summoned. Um, creature Swap is really the main thing that we want. This just never came up. I never sided into it. So I'm cutting it and putting it in Storm because there's so many fucking floodgates in this format that I don't want to play into. Die Fight. Mind Crush is crazy. Uh, you just hand rip your opponent uh, and Fire Fist, they add Bear. Bear is scary. No more Bear. This kills uh, Dark World. It kills Infernity. Uh, this is a very good side deck card. That is Mermail.
I'm very happy with how the list performed. There's some minor changes, especially understanding the format better. Uh, it just took playing in some pods to understand the format and how some of the, the non-engine needs to be placed in. Uh, I think some of the changes I've shown are some ones that probably could be applied to some of the other decks that we've shown off. Just generally, there's a lot of floodgates. There's a lot of uh, back row uh, that exists in the format that we need more hate for. Storm is something I'm trying out. I'm not super confident on it though. Uh, there's a very funny play of like Sphere and then Activate Storm uh, to you know just go off. But uh, yeah, that's the list. It's very good. Mermil is not the best deck. Please do not play Mullen Glacia. Please do not play Lead. They are bad. Please, I am begging you to stop playing this card. Thank you for watching. This has been Salald Gaming. Salald Gaming. Bye. -bye. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. <laughs>